London's greatest support system, the River Thames, is in trouble. The river is being exposed to millions of tons of raw sewage yearly, posing a threat to wildlife and public health. To save the river, the government is spending $6.5 billion towards a super sewer that could change everything. The River Thames isn't your ordinary body of water. Instead, it's London's lifeline. For centuries, it has fueled trade, sculpted the city's skyline, and provided the background for some of history's most memorable events. But underneath its gleaming veneer lurks a sad secret. The Thames, a river that once supported life, is today suffering from a silent crisis. Every year, millions of tons of untreated sewage are dumped into the river, which is transforming what should be a beloved stream into a deadly stew. So, how do we get here? The answer to this dates back years, to the Victorian era. The City of London still uses a sewer system from the 1860s, which at the time was an engineering marvel. It was built by the legendary Joseph Bazalgette to handle a max population of 2 million people. However, London isn't exactly home to just 2 million people now, as over 8 million residents live in the city, and the 1860s sewer system is unable to handle the load. The sewer can carry both rainwater and wastewater, which was revolutionary at the time, but couldn't handle urban growth. While the sewers have their limitations on regular days, but when it rains, which is pretty common in London, the system overflows directly into the River Thames. Rising E. coli levels make the water unsafe for anybody who comes in touch with it. Swimmers and rowers are at danger of severe diseases, and boats are frequently forced to navigate a river clogged with garbage and pollutants. Wildlife is also suffering. Fish numbers are declining, and the river's fragile ecology is battling to survive under a constant barrage of pollutants. It's more than simply an environmental disaster. It's a public health emergency. The Thames runs through the centre of London via some of its most densely inhabited regions. People who live near the river are exposed to airborne germs from contaminated water and sewage overflows, raising the risk of waterborne illness. This problem isn't new for the City of London, but one that's getting worse with every passing day. If we wait any longer, the damage might become greater. The River Thames is in crisis if a radical solution is not proposed or implemented things can get even worse. To discuss how this new $6.5 billion super sewer can save London, let's first go back in time to understand where it all started. Before 1858, London's River Thames was unofficially the city's dumping ground. Waste from different parts of the city was directly dumped into the river, making it so polluted that the parliament was forced to take notice. Due to the peak summer days, the Thames had turned into a stinking, seething mass of filth, its waters saturated with human waste and industrial effluent. It was even called the Great Stink by the city's newspapers, and they weren't lying. For decades, London's garbage disposal policy had been straightforward – flush it into the Thames and hope for the best. But when the city's population increased throughout the Industrial Revolution, this strategy failed horribly. The toxic combination of waste and chemicals in the river caused fatal cholera epidemics, killing tens of thousands. With the Thames situation getting out of hand, the government reached out to the chief engineer of the Metropolitan Board of Works, Joseph Bazalgette. This man completely changed the face of London's infrastructure, and his methods were something to be studied for the future. Bazalgette proposed a radical solution, which London desperately needed. He suggested development of a vast underground network of sewers, which could carry waste from the city to the treatment facilities. His sewerage system was a Victorian engineering masterclass. His system relied on gravity and pumping stations to keep the sewage moving. This system is still currently being used by the city and has massive outflows, brick-lined tunnels, and giant sewers that prevent waste from staying in one place. Bazalgette, with his incredible foresight, had anticipated that London's population would continue to increase, which is why he quadrupled the capacity of his sewer system beyond what was required at the time. It was a choice that preserved London for more than a century by averting future cholera epidemics and restored some cleanliness to the Thames. However, even the greatest engineering wonders have limits. 
When Bazalgette constructed the system in the 1860s, he could not have imagined the extent of London's growth. His sewers were designed for 2 million people, but they now service nearly 8 million, a figure that is steadily increasing. The once advanced combined sewer system, which combines rainfall and sewage in the same pipes, is currently operating over its design capacity. This is where the problems start for London's sewer system. During the winter season in London, the sewers which are designed to sometimes release excess waste into the Thames often overflow. This facility, which was added as an occasional safety measure, has turned into a frequent act. As of now, millions of tons of untreated sewage is being dumped into the Thames, and if this continues, then London's support system will slowly die. Finally, there's climate change, which Bazalgat could never have anticipated. As weather patterns evolve, London is seeing heavier and more frequent rains. More rain causes more overflows, which lead to more pollutants in the Thames. The system, long considered a wonder of contemporary engineering, is now hopelessly antiquated. Urban growth has also contributed to the sewer system's capacity being exceeded. London's skyscrapers, suburban networks, and densely populated districts have altered how water flows across the city. More construction and asphalt means less natural drainage, which forces more rainwater into an already overburdened system. Joseph Bazalgette's incredible solution may have saved the City of London and the Thames once, but today it has become outdated and ineffective. If the government doesn't build a new large-scale solution viable for decades, then the Thames might turn back into the sanitation nightmare called the Great Stink. London's struggle with sewage pollution has raged for decades, but the city is now banking on a game-changing mega-project to reverse the tide. Enter London's $6.5 billion super sewer, the Thames Tideway Tunnel. This mega-project is set to fix London's sanitation problems by capturing untreated sewage before it enters the Thames. The super sewer is anticipated to cut pollutions by 95%, substantially improving water quality and bringing life back to the river. On paper, this super sewer seems a bit simple, however, building it will be no small feat. Since this new sewer will work alongside London's existing sewage system, it will need some of the most advanced tunneling technology ever used. To make this project a reality, the team will need to use tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, to cut out the tunnel's underground track. These massive, revolving cutters can grind through dirt, rock, and clay, forming a path for the wastewater system. Six TBMs have been stationed along various portions of the tunnel, each working extensively to dig beneath London's rough terrain. The project will make use of a crucial innovation called the Vortex Drop Shafts. These unique structures are built to redirect and slow down untreated sewage into the sewer system. The waste, which usually crashes down chaotically, will slowly swirl in a controlled flow, which will reduce turbulence, ensuring that the system runs smoothly. These shafts are placed at 34 key locations along the river and will act as interception points that will stop sewage from reaching the River Thames. The super sewer's storage capacity is also incredible. It can retain up to 1.6 million cubic meters of wastewater, giving the city's treatment plants enough time to adequately handle the sewage before it's discharged into the environment. With this increased capacity, the system will no longer need to dump excess wastage into the River Thames whenever it rains. The Thames Tideway Tunnel is under construction since 2016 and was expected to be completed in 2024. However, nearly a decade later, the project is still being constructed and is now expected to be fully operational anytime in 2025. This delay in construction is because of the COVID-19 pandemic, logistical challenges, and the complex construction process beneath the streets of London. However, with each milestone completing one by one, the vision for a cleaner Thames is just a few steps away. Once completed, the tunnel will reduce sewer discharges by an estimated 95%, dramatically improving water quality. This might mark a turning point for aquatic life, allowing fish, eels, and other species to repopulate the Thames in greater numbers. Some fauna, such as seals and seahorses, have begun to repopulate in recent years. With cleaner waterways, these groups may thrive, undoing millennia of environmental damage. At first, the Thames Tideway Tunnel might seem like an underground pipe under the streets of London. However, it is a lifeline for the most iconic river 
and an initiative to protect it. This $6.5 billion project will not just tackle sanitation issues. Instead, it will set a benchmark of how cities can deal with pollution and adapt their infrastructure for a secure future. The question still remains, can it protect the River Thames? This project is undoubtedly one of the most ambitious and revolutionary infrastructure projects in the city's history. However, with a hefty price tag of $6.5 billion, is the project really worth it? Or could the team have gone with a much cheaper and effective option? Even though the project promises to reduce wastage by 95%, critics are still confused whether it will generate a positive return on investment. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Who's paying for this multi-billion dollar sewer project? For starters, the Thames Tideway Tunnel isn't a government-funded infrastructure project. Instead, it is being financed by private investors. Despite being a private-funded project, these costs will be ultimately passed down to Londoners. The government has increased water utility bills in the city to cover construction expenses, as each house is now paying an extra 20 to 25 pounds per year. Even though saving the Thames from the waste disposal is a necessary step, many critics believe that these costs shouldn't be passed down to the people. Apart from finance, the tunnel's construction has faced several other challenges. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, construction of the tunnel was halted for months, which pushed back the timeline and increased overall costs. Engineers also had to deal with dense clay and groundwater issues in the area, which made excavation more challenging. These challenges, accompanied by the big challenge of constructing a massive underground tunnel beneath one of the world's busiest cities, is a nightmare. Since London is home to historic buildings, densely packed infrastructure and subway lines, each step of the construction had to be done with great precision and planning. Even after the project is completed, people will still question whether this super sewer will be able to protect the River Thames in the future. As climate change intensifies and London expecting more frequent storms and heavier rains, will this project sustain and handle the excess water? Experts believe that even after the super sewer is built, London's sewage might still overflow in those heavy rain seasons. If this happens, then they might need another multi-billion dollar solution. Even after the Thames Tideway Tunnel project was announced, there has been a constant debate revolving around questioning whether the tunnel is a long-term solution or an expensive short-term solution. While we cannot deny the fact that this project will drastically reduce sewage spills, experts believe that the tunnel will go obsolete within decades as London's population increases. With the Thames Tideway Tunnel being operational in 2025, it's expected to bring significant benefits for the City of London. By intercepting and redirecting untreated wastage overflows before they reach the Thames, they will reduce the pollution by 95% and make the river safer and cleaner. This will foster growth of fish populations and other aquatic life. A clean and safe Thames will promote activities like open water swimming, rowing and kayaking. If you think London is the only city to face a wastewater crisis, then you're wrong. Every major metropolitan city, ranging from Paris to New York, has faced some sort of wastewater challenges. To deal with them, cities like Paris have underground stormwater reservoirs, which have cutting-edge water treatment plants that offer a long-term and sustainable solution. New York, on the other hand, has its big tunnel, which is somewhat similar to the Thames Tideway Tunnel that helps reduce sewage overflows. Even though the Thames Tideway Tunnel is a big step in the right direction, we don't know yet if it is the final solution to London's sewage problem. As the city increases in population and climate change intensifies, London will have to rethink its sewer system to ensure that the Thames doesn't get polluted. That's all for today. What is your opinion on this $6.5 billion super sewer? Will it stand the test of time, or will London have to proceed with a new multi-billion dollar project? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And while you're there, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.